So there's a type of current account that I think most of us should be having, and it's one that pays cash back on your bills. Now, the only bank that provides this is Santander, and they have three different accounts that will offer you the opportunity to get money back on council tax, TV, mobile, broadband, gas, electricity, water, things that we are all spending, or at least our households are all paying for pretty much. Now, quick disclaimer before we get into it, if you aren't paying those bills, then these accounts aren't going to be for you. There will be better options. And if you're maybe someone who splits bills, so you pay for some and someone pays for the other, then again, you're not going to get the most out of these. But you could well look at getting a joint account, putting those things together. And this is absolutely where I think these accounts really, really win. If you live on your own, have your own. If you're in a couple or a house share, or whatever, have a joint account and pay those bills out of there. And purely look at them as ways to get money back on your bills, not as your main account for anything else, just for your bills. I'm not going to go into detail here, but obviously there are uh, implications of having joint accounts with someone you will be linked financially with them. So do make sure that they haven't got a really shocking credit report because that could have uh, an impact on your report, on your credit score. Anyway, these accounts, let's have a look at them, shall we? There are, let's quickly first of all go to the Santander website. Uh, there's the one, two, three. Uh, this is this one here. This is the kind of one that's been around for a long, long time. A lot of you may have had this for a while. And the primary thing we're talking about cashback here, but obviously this one does also offer some interest on bills. And we will talk about interest rate on savings. We'll talk about that as well. The other one is the Santander Edge that launched last year. I have got a whole video going into detail on that one, but we'll talk obviously a bit more about it in comparison between the two in a moment. Again, cash back on your bills, a different rate. Uh, you also can get other cash back and also you can get interest on your savings. And the third one, which is no longer available to new customers, but if you've already got it, it's important to put it into this comparison, is the Santander 123 Lite. So should we have a, let's have a quick look. Let's look in more detail about what they offer before we get into the analysis. So this is the Santander Edge here. This is my, uh, I've got everything I'm talking about right now. Also over on BeCleverYourCash.com, I've got an article. So if you want to read up some stuff, again, after this, look at some of the numbers and figures, head over there and you'll be able to sort of delve into it again. But this is the Santander Edge account. It has a monthly fee of £3. Uh, you will get 4% interest, although that includes a 0.5% bonus for the first year. So after that, it'll drop down to 3.5% on balances of up to £4,000 via the Santander Edge Savings account. There's a separate account that you can open. Now, the cash back here on your bills, this is capped at £10 per month. So you can get 1% on the bills I mentioned before, your council tax, your phone, your mobile uh, phone, your TV, uh, your broadband, your gas, your electricity, and your water. 1% back on these things you're paying anyway, okay, which is great. There's also with this one, and this is capped at £10 for this is a separate se section, 1% back on spending at the supermarket and on essential travel. So commuting, basically, trains, petrol, things like that. Not on airlines, not on holidays, anything like that. So really, so you're your basic spending. Now, that is not available on the other options, but I'm not going to bother comparing this one in detail because I don't think it's worth it. You can get 1% back from other cards or even close to 1%. And I still think it's going to be better because you can use that on a number of other things, not just at supermarket, not just at petrol, but on the bulk of your other spending. So really, by using this Santander card to the Edge card to earn cash back, you know, you're losing out, I think, by not using an alternative. So for me, that's out of the table and I'm not going to be using that in the comparison. Uh, requirements here very quickly, you pay £500 in every single month, doesn't have to stay there. Although if you're paying those bills, you'll probably need that money in there to cover those bills and at least two direct debits. And if you're getting the cash back on the bills, then those, they will be direct debits. So that's not really going to be a hard one for you to kind of uh, requirements for you to meet. Next, we have the Santander 123. As I say, it's been around for a long time. This one has a higher monthly fee, £4 a month. So you're paying a quid more. Uh, you get interest, a lower rate of interest, 2%. That's just increased in early February 2023, but on much larger balances, up to £20,000. And I will come back to the, the interest and savings comparison later on as well. But again, the focus here really is that cash back here. There are three different tiers and each tier is capped at five pounds. So the most you can earn in a month is 15 quid. So that's five pounds more than you could earn on the bills from the previous account. Uh, but again, I think it's unlikely in both instances you'll, you'll get to those caps, but we'll come back to that. But the first one is 1% on council tax, phone, mobile, TV and broadband. And if you have a Santander mortgage, you'll also get 1% back there. And in fact, I say no one's going to go past that five pound cap. If you have a Santander mortgage and those bills, there's a chance the most you'll get there is is five quid on that level. Then we look at 2% on your gas and electricity. 
three percent on water bills and again each of those five pounds each i think it's unlikely you'll hit those and the requirements are exactly the same 500 pounds every single month has to come in and two direct debits but you should be meeting them so they are the two accounts you can get right now from santander but as i said it's really important that we also talk about the one two three light uh, and here's the kind of table there for this one this is an account which uh as the name suggests is very 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 similar to the one two three the difference is well there's two big differences the fee is lower it's just two pounds a month and uh there is no interest available on this account okay so you potentially wouldn't earn as much but you'd pay less for it the cashback rates are exactly the same and there are a couple of extra requirements you need to make sure you are paperless and you need to make sure you use the online or app banking every three months i say not available to new customers but if you've got it and you're thinking well, do i move to the edge this is this video will help you there but primarily we're talking about comparison between the edge and the one two three but really important we mentioned that one so that is they're the main accounts as i said i think you absolutely should get one not as your main account there are better accounts out there for everyday banking uh whether that's looking at starling for the app or uh, other rewards you can get like the halifax reward, all those kind of things which may be more lucrative but definitely i think get one of these for your bills uh, as a second account and you transfer the money into that account to cover those direct debits that are going out since most of those direct debits are going to be fixed obviously mobile phone could vary but most of them will be fixed you should be able to set it up and just let it go the money goes into that account and the direct debits get paid and you earn the cash back and it keeps revolving like that very very light touch account for you but let's have a look now the important thing is is which one is the best though right so let's have a look at how much you can make from the cash back uh very very simple way to do this to work this out is to go to the santander website so let's show you how to do this how to find it here is the uh one two three website and it's the same place for both of them you'll scroll down this bit here and you'll get to a section that says interest and cash back open that up and it will go after a little bit of an explanation you'll get to a calculator so you'll put in here how much you pay on those bills now important one here on council tax this is the same for the edge calculator on council tax they are working this out on 10 monthly direct debit payments which is often how council tax is set up uh, and then put in your other uh, amounts here you do have to be slightly careful obviously when you're putting this in before you put them in just to check that your supplier is uh participating in the santander cashback there are a handful that aren't uh there may also be some which are come under a different name so for example mns energy they're not listed on there and you will find that link on this same page as well they're not listed on there but you'll still get the cash back because they're run by octopus and you're billed by octopus others just won't be part of it so obviously before you put the numbers in do just check that your supplier is taking part uh with this one as well i, I would again we'll come back to interest but i would do this without putting in any sort of map balance on savings same for the edge calculator okay so avoid putting that in because we're really talking here about comparison for your cash back and the edge one again same place go to their website on santander you scroll down and you'll see it in exactly the same place again it has an extra section for the one percent your debit card spend but again i don't think you should factor that in really focus here just on the money back on your bills now putting this all together is great it gives you a rough figure on that it puts the fee into account you can take that into account already for you if you have got the one two three light and you want to work out what you would earn in sadly that calculator has disappeared so you'll have to use the full one two three calculator uh, and then just add on uh, an extra 24 pounds profit on top of the figure you get there because the fee is quite different now it's all very well well and good telling you about that going users but what does it actually mean in practice now i'm using my example this is kind of what i uh will be earning from these different accounts so we can get a rough idea now bear in mind that i have me me and me i've switched around a lot i've got the best possible deals i hopefully can on most of those different options so they're relatively low i don't have any pay tv or sky or virgin i stitched those ages ago yes i have streaming services but they aren't uh via this you can't get cash back on them by this but you could if you use the chase or amex debit card so you can still get that money elsewhere now my accounts tax quite high for where i live uh you can see that the rate because it's one percent across all three accounts is exactly the same same for the broadband same for the mobile phones now, gas and electricity this is where there is a difference comes into play remember that is two percent with the one two three lights and the one two three but only one percent with the edge so you're double the amount here now bills are obviously very high right now um you may even have a bill that's higher than 250 quid uh in which case uh the five pound cap comes into play on the one two three and the one two three light uh potentially you could earn a bit more let's say you had a 300 pound bill on the edge you'd get three pounds on that so maybe it will creep up a little bit you might have more but my direct debit right now is set at 250 and that's working fine uh water again that's three percent of the one two three and the one two three light but only one percent of the difference there 
when you factor in the fee and then uh, give it a monthly amount and then you multiply that out for the year for 12 months, you can see very clearly when we're talking about cashback, if you have the one, two, three light, it is head and shoulders above the rest. So keep it, do not change it. If you're new and looking between the one, two, three and the edge, then the one, two, three should earn you the most cashback, particularly if you have a Santander mortgage and that would be even higher. Um, and if energy bills, uh, the only way the edge I think could be higher is potentially if those energy bills are even more than 250, but it would take a long time for that to catch up uh, and become uh, more comparable. So we are looking very clearly there. You think, right, video over, Andy. Go for the one, two, three over the edge. But we can't do that because there is, as we know, also an additional factor available from the edge and the one, two, three. And this is the interest on savings. Now, though, I'll get another table up for you here. So we can have a look at what those savings would be like, how much you'd get if you had uh, a certain amount in them. And uh, the one I'm comparing you here are the amount of money you could have saved in the one, two, three, we're at 2%. In the edge at 4%, bear in mind that drops to 3.5% in year two. And what is currently the best easy access account, 3.05%. Saving rates are obviously changing all the time, nudging up a little bit. Uh, I do a savings update every single month, so keep an eye on that if you want to find out if things improve. Um, what you would get if you put your money in there instead of those other accounts. I'm also working out on the assumption that you are getting cash back on your bills, which covers the fee, because if you are paying a fee on this, you're not going cash back and you're getting fee, then it really, really massively reduces how much interest you'll earn on these accounts. And in fact, it only really becomes maybe slightly better than the easy access account if you are paying the fee and not earning cash back is if you have a joint edge account and then from an that you open up two edge savers and you have more than £4,500 combined in those two accounts. Does that make sense? So realistically, you need to be you're earning cash back on your bills to cover that monthly fee before you even think about them for savings. But let's see what happens. Let's say you do have a uh, thousand pounds saved. In a one, two, three account, you'll get 20 quid a year. In the edge saver for the first year, you'll get 40 quid, so double the amount, which is amazing. If instead you put that thousand pounds in an easy access account paying 3.05%, you get 30 pounds and 50 pence. So the clear winner there is the edge. Go on to up to four thousand pounds. This is remember, this is the most you will get be able to earn interest on in the edge, and it wins again quite clearly there. Much, much more uh, you're going to get between the different accounts uh, significantly over the one, two, three. Uh, maybe sort of was at thirty-eight quid uh, difference on the um, on the versus the easy access saver right now where rates are. But then for savings rates above that, obviously you're not going to earn money from the edge saver account unless you did have a joint account which has more, which does make a bit of a difference. But let's focus on just a single account here. Uh, again, you're not earning any more money. So any savings you had in that edge would not be doing anything. So I think what this clearly shows to you, if you are thinking of using either the accounts for interest, do not use the one, two, three. That can be beaten very, very easily by an easy access account out there. If you have to go for the edge instead of the one, two, three, then up to 4K, it's going to be hard to beat, although it's not impossible to beat. I've spoken here about the best easy access save, the one that anyone can open up. If you're a Barclays customer right now with their blue rewards, you can get 5.12% on up to 5K. So a higher rate on more money. Also, there are a number of regular savers for regular money, monthly money you put aside, which can be up to 5% and 7% there as well. So they can be beaten. However, if we are comparing again, the edge and the one, two, three, and let's assume you're earning the one, two, three for cash back, but your savings are elsewhere, but you've got the edge for cash back and your savings are in there, that obviously changes that table we sh I showed you before in terms of the difference between the edge and the one, two, three. And it's not massively different, but let's go back to my example, okay? So in my example, I showed that it was very clearly that I had uh, the one, two, three earned me more cash back than the, than the edge, okay? Because that increased rates. If I had four grand in the edge as well, then actually I'd probably earn more money having that money in my edge with the cash back than having the money uh, in a separate account and the cash back from the one, two, three. Only by a tenner. And obviously if I have less savings, that reduces. And if easy access accounts increase, that reduces as well. Or if I had my money in that Barclays 5.12% uh, paying account, again, that changes things massively. But it does show you that there's potentially the possible for the edge to earn you a little bit more. So where does that leave us then? What should you go for? Well, as I've said a number of times, the one, two, three lights, if you already have it, stick with it. I don't see a benefit of you moving over 
to the edge because of that interest rate, because there isn't enough of a difference available from that account and other ones out there based on the cap on how much you can uh, actually save in it. If you don't have either and you're looking at which one to get, I would probably go for the one, two, three, simply because the cashback rates on energy bills are higher and energy bills are so high right now that despite it being a one pound extra every single month, you should make that back and more. And if you were to factor in interest on savings, as we have just now, it's not going to be enough based on that cap on the edge, that £4,000 cap, and the fact that rate drops after a year, and the fact that other easy access accounts are getting higher and notice accounts and limited access accounts can even push that even more uh, towards the sort of to up towards that 4%. I don't think it's enough of a difference for that to happen. Of course, use those calculators, work out exactly what you would make from those to help you make the right decision for you and make sure you do keep an eye out for any switching deals that are running obviously i'll give you an update on those over here on the channel and in fact there's one recording this right now there is one running in february 2023 so make sure you take advantage of that as well i'd love to know which of the santander accounts you have let me know in the comments below what you like about them what you don't like and watch these videos right here for more ways to help you with your banking